Hi guys, uh, Patek here. Today's video will be my October wrap up. Wow, second wrap up already. And I'll be honest that somehow October managed to become the best reading month that I've had since February, I think. It's amazing. Pretty much everything I've read in October was something that I truly, truly loved. In terms of rating, I pretty much gave every single book that I've read in October a 4.5 out of 5 stars or 5 out of 5 stars. Only one book received a 4 out of 5 stars from me and that, that is still pretty good. I still love that book. I, I will talk about it soon. But yeah, it's overall an incredible month and I hope November will be uh, even better, especially with, you know, so many great books coming out next month. And also, I'm trying a new angle for my video. It's actually just a reorientation uh, of the uh, of my previous videos, but I thought at least you can see some books now. <laughs> anyway, back to the books. I have talked a bit about the first two books that I finished in October. The first one is The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. The Fires of Vengeance is the second book in the Burning Quartet by Evan Winter. It is a truly spectacular book. I love The Rage of Dragons, as I said, but in my opinion, The Fires of Vengeance was even better. It took everything that's already established in the first book and Winter built upon them magnificently well. The action were extremely well written, it's better, and we also get a lot of revelations about the world building and history behind the world. And I totally love the concept of Ishihogo. As I've mentioned before, it reminded me of Dark Souls. Uh, the video games. If you're a fan of Dark Souls or Bloodborne, you will know why I correlate uh, Ishihogo with these games. And also, The Fires of Vengeance is a much more violent book. Evan Winter pretty much uh, went merciless towards showing the price of war. It's deadly, so deadly. The second book that I finished was The Stone Knife by Anna Stevens. This is the first book in a new trilogy called The Songs of the Drowned. And I totally love this one as well. I gave it a 4.5 stars, rounded up to 5 stars on Goodreads. And it's one of my favorite books of the year, for sure. It's incredible that somehow Anna Stevens managed to write something that's different from Godblind, uh, which I haven't continued past the first book. So what I'm saying right now is just based on the first book of Godblind and the first book of this trilogy. But yeah, Anna Stevens still retained the key element that make her such a great storyteller. It's very brutal. The world building is fascinating. One of the greatest things about this book is actually the way that Stevens uh, portrayed the differences of culture and how they always clash with each other. It's so good. You can see why this faction clash with each other. You can see the reasons behind the characters. And I loved it. It's brilliant. Just brilliant. Please, please give this a go. It comes out in the 26th of November. The third book that I finished in October is A Fool's Hope by Mike Shekel. This is the second book in the Last War trilogy. It is the sequel to We Are the Dead. And wow, it's one of my favorite books of the year. Amazing, simply amazing. It's completely action-packed. It went into a direction that I never thought was going for the series and the book becomes so much better for it. And there is several new POV included in this book that elevate this book to be even better than the first one, in my opinion. It's quite grim, but the characters are very much likable. I don't actually know whether to call this a grimdark or not. I think it's, it kinda hangs in the middle of uh, grimdark and heroic fantasy. If you love the action sequences and characterizations that Joe Abercrombie writes, I think you will love this trilogy. Easily one of the greatest find for me this year. And yeah, I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. Cannot wait for the third book to come out, hopefully next year. The fourth book that I finished is Winter Steel by uh, Will White. This is the eighth book in the Cradle series. And honestly, this one is the only one that I gave four stars within this month. Uh, I, I cannot talk about the details of the plot here. And to be honest, I can bring it down to two reasons why I didn't give this one a five stars. So many fans of the series consider this one to be the best of the series. So you might want to take this opinion with a grain of salt. So here's the thing. Have you ever read a book that's so incredibly hyped that uh, it didn't live up to your expectation? That's pretty much what happened with Winter Still for me. When this book was launched, every social media that I'm in, Twitter, Facebook, Goodreads, Instagram, somehow everyone talk about Winter Still. Which is a good thing, of course, because the book, the series clearly deserves its recognition and hype. But it was the constant and uh, extreme, extremely positive uh, reviews and ratings and opinions that I saw repeatedly before I read the book that made my expectation insanely high and I couldn't stop it. It didn't really live up to my expectation. It's still a great book, and I think if I also had reread the previous book of, or the series, I would have loved this one so much more. And that's why I conclude this by saying that although I gave this one a four stars, I loved it. I think on reread, which I will do one day, I think I will love this one even so much more. It's a great book, and the conclusion was very satisfying. Probably the most satisfying conclusion of the 
of the series so far. And I know it's not really fair for me to lower a rating just because I personally call it overhyped, but well, that what, that's what happened. I mean, of course, my expectation will increase insanely when people call it even better than Stormlight Archives. Some even have mentioned they don't need the Stormlight Archives anymore because there's Winter Steel. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? If you haven't read the series though, do join the hype now. It will, it will only grow from here. For the Cradle series, it's like this bubble thing. Uh, it's like this bubble of super popularity that once you enter, you just realize just how popular this series is. I know, it's, it's kind of weird, but well, the popularity and the sales speak for itself. When this book was launched, it became the number one best-selling book on Kindle. All category, number one. That's crazy. The fifth book that I finished uh, on October was Skin Game by Jim Butcher. This is the 15th book in the Dresden Files series and it is easily my favorite book in the series so far. This book was so entertaining, so fun, there's so much going on and everything that happened constantly uh, absorbed my attention. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss has reviewed this book with so much high praises and I think this one actually lived up to it. And and one of the best thing about Skin Game is that one of my favorite characters from the series is uh, someone called Waldo Butters. If you have read the series, the Polka Never Die dude, his development in this book was so astounding. There were several scenes that actually made me fist pump and there were several emotional scenes that truly tug at my heartstring. Sixth book that I finished in October is Briefcases. Again, uh, this is the kinda like the sequel to Side Jobs. It's a collection of short stories and novellas in the Dresden Files series. I don't have much to say here. I pretty much couldn't click with majority of the stories. And in general, I'm not a fan of short stories anyway. And I think uh, Dresden Files is much better when it's told in a novel form than short stories like this. However, if you are a diehard fans of the series, I think, uh, well, briefcases would be worth your time, especially the, the one that's titled Zoo Day. It was wholesome to the max and I love that one. Oh, hold on. I actually gave briefcases three out of five stars. So it's not only Winter Steel that I gave uh, below 4.5 stars rating in October. As for the seventh book that I finished in October, it is a reread of Oddbringer by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, I'm gonna put this down, it's so heavy. This is the first time that I reread Oddbringer and I'm just genuinely amazed by Sanderson genius. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow Oddbringer was even better on reread. And I know that relatively many fans of the series consider Oddbringer to be the weakest book of the three books that's out so far, but I disagree with them. I think Oddbringer, if I have to choose, is the second best of the three books that's out so far. Words of Radiance is uh, kind of unbeatable at the moment. I don't even know whether Sanderson can ever write a book that tops Words of Radiance. It's pretty much near perfection. But anyway, all three books in the Stormlight Archive so far are masterpiece. I would give them 6 out of 5 stars, all of them, if I could. And I simply cannot wait for Rhythm of War to come out. Two more weeks, guys. Two more weeks. Uh, the final book that I finished in October is Tiamat's Red by James S. A. Corey. This is the 8th and penultimate book in the Expand series. I pretty much have to take back my words that this series have overstayed its welcome. I think one of the main reasons why this book works so well for me is that Corey is preparing the series to reach its conclusion now. Well, this is the penultimate book after all. And yeah, I love this one. I think this is the best of the series so far. And I love every moment that I spend with this book. I'm currently in the middle of watching the TV series. I just finished season three. Wow, so good, so good. I think uh, the TV show is actually even better than the book. Uh, that's not something to say lightly. That doesn't happen often. I actually have no idea whether that actually played an influence that made me love this book more. But yeah, I love this one. The Valkyrie scene, only those who have read this book will understand it, was probably the most badass and incredible scene out of the entire series so far. I love this one. It is the most emotional. And I think this book shows the extraordinary depth of the relationship between the crew of the Rocinante. It's wonderful. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars and I round it up. Cannot wait for the final book to come out uh, next year. Leviathan Fall is the title. So that's all the books that I managed to finish in October. As for my favorite books of the month, I think in October I would have to choose two books. I'm going to exclude my uh, reread so Oddbringer doesn't count. I will choose The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter and A Fool's Hope by Mike Shackle as my favorite books of the month. That's all from me today. Uh, I hope you guys have a lovely day and uh, thank you so much for watching. And do tell me what's your favorite book that you've read in October. Bye!